Welcome back to Car Mechanic Simulator 2021. Today we start in the barn, which will become very clear soon why. But first of all, if you're enjoying these episodes or any content on the channel, don't forget to subscribe, and a like on the videos does really help. So today we're going to do a rebuild, but I'm just going to show you what else we find found in the barn first. If I can get my words out, of course. So we went to the barn after we'd done our previous story car. And the first car we came across in here was this beauty of a car, the Moreno Bizarrini. Bizarrini? Um, we haven't got a mass, we've got a decent amount of money to be fair. But this car is 89,000. I did consider it, I really considered buying it, but I just thought 2,000 pound left, not worth it. So we left that one, but instead we also found the Bolt Cape Mark IV, which, title of the video, tells you exactly what we're doing with this. So we bought this for £18,489. We also came across this car. So this is a Ribson Starline, standard edition. And this car is one we'll probably do later on down the line. We've got a few stories that the cars to do first. This is £31,081, so that's another one we bought. So after fixing all the parts, putting stuff in the warehouse, we're here, we're ready. So this is the Bolt Cape Mark IV. F mil version and we're going to do the factory rebuild on the car I really wish I'd washed it first I know I should have done I didn't think about it <laughs> but we'll, we'll sort that out later so first of all as we always do we've got to drain the oil as the starting thing starting part the car's not in too bad shape um, it's missing a few parts to be expected a lot of the plastic in the engine bay is gone so that's all the things that hold the liquids none of them are there and you generally find that's a big feature as you look at the engine it's a lovely blue engine i do like the blue the only downside is the gearbox doesn't match the engine in color and that's a bit weird but yeah you generally find any cars in the scrapyard or the barn don't have the holders for liquids and i'm assuming it's just because they corrode that would be my generalization of why they're not there but we'll start off we're going to take off the gearbox, just so we get the car out. I think this car, this the engine itself is going to look extremely nice when it's done. I'm kind of excited, and that's probably why I can't get my words out. And we're going to do our usual thing. This is going to be another car to go around the racetrack, and so we're going to get a top race time, and we're going to get a top speed uh, test time as well. So that can all go on our leaderboard, and we'll see where it is come the end of the video. But we start off. Engine has to come out. I'm just checking to make sure there's nothing else we need to take out of the engine bay so we don't get fined. And the engine is out. And now we can put the engine on the crane. So it doesn't look too bad. Um, as always, for taking a thing off, we're going to speed it up. Um, there's a lot of little bits to take off, which will become very apparent very quickly once we take this cover off. And there we have them the push rods all the way through. There's quite a few of them. And they are fiddly. They are annoying to take off and put back in. But this is us dismantling the engine. Which went fairly well. I think, you know, we're kind of getting used to dismantling the engines now. We're getting used to dismantling the suspension units. The rebuilds aren't too bad. It's annoying when you don't have all the parts on you ahead of time. You've got to buy as you go and try and, you know, add to the uh, shopping list. And buy in bulk, so if we have, I try and get like five, six parts listed in the shopping list, buy them, put them on, next ones. And can kind of do that, we are checking the warehouse, we are getting more and more units of things in the warehouse that we can use, save us some money going forward. So it's working out really well. And there we go, that is just the engine just about taken apart, we've got a few little bits to do. And then the main engine block itself can come off. And we're going to fix it all. So that is everything fixed. I know, done in a second. Took me a lot longer than that to do it. Um, but with everything's fixed, we've taken things out of our warehouse as well. And now we're going to start building the engine. So everything back in. We haven't actually put anything on the shopping list yet. I probably should have done sooner. Pistons and piston rings are the first, first thing we have to do. But so far, so good. Um, so I've actually slowed down the speed the speed up is running at. I know that makes no sense. Um, for taking the engine apart, it was a lot quicker in terms of video time speed. <laughs> but in putting it back together, um, I've slowed it down a little bit. Mainly because I wanted to be able to show what we did, 
whereas taking it apart isn't I don't think that's such a big deal I like showing it but I think that can stay quite quick whereas this will be a little bit slower just to show how we did it and our preparation and things like that but let me know what you think about the two different speeds and what you drive I'm more than happy my conscious thing is always length of videos that's always my big conscious effort is try and keep them as small as possible or least amount of time rebuilds are generally taking us about half an hour once I've edited and sped up and that kind of stuff including laps which is about the maximum I don't really want to go too much more I know some have been a few bits over I don't want to go too much more than half an hour for the episode I can help it anyway um, but let me know if there's things you don't want to see need to see then I'm quite happy to cut them out but just let me know what you think I'm really enjoying the series the game I've got a lot of things coming up the DLCs are out um, we've got a couple of episodes coming up in the future where we'll focus on customer cars that are DS, DLC cars only. So we do all four of those in one episode. We've got some amazing rebuilds coming up as well as we work our way through. And once we get to freestyle the car, which will come on our third rebuild of the exact same car with the exact same engine, we will look to do an, a complete performance-based rebuild. So we'll tune the end, we'll tune the gearbox. We'll put every performance part on we can. We'll upgrade it to the hilt just to see how much different the lap times will be. I think it'll be a good comparison. And obviously, every time we've done, once we've done five cars on the lap times and the high speed test, we'll also do a video just on those five top five cars um, and the, the laps and the order they're in and that kind of stuff. It's kind of my focus at the minute. That's kind of where I'm going. And we still want to keep the story cars rolling as well. I think they're quite important to keep on top of. And we still got bits to buy for the garage. We've still got new things we need. So we'll definitely get in there though. How are we going with this? Anyway, back to the rebuild. As you can see, we're on the monotonous job of the push rods. But they're going on. Albeit a little bit slow, but they're going on under locker arms. But we're getting there. We're nearly done. As the last push rod goes in and the top can go on. The engine itself in the almighty blue looks fantastic when it's brand new especially. Looks a lot, ten times better in fact than it did when we first looked at it. I do like the colour. And I'm not one that goes and colours parts admittedly. I'm more one that wants to keep everything as is. But the actual blue engine, I'm really enjoying the look of it. And as we finish off the engine fan is in place we now just need to put the gearbox parts back on so flywheel once you buy one didn't add that to my shop on this did I but flywheel to go on finally yep there we go uh, clutch plate got one of those I think that was out of our warehouse to be fair well we could I think we can fix clutch plates but you can't flip fix flywheels or clutch pressure plates I think that's what it is but the clutch plate itself can be fixed. I think that's why we had one that was 100%. There we go. Clutch, clutch pressure plate. i put my teeth back in. Is in place. You just need the clutch release bearing. And the engine is done. In a second. There we go. So this is the I60HV engine. Finished. And I... I I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks really nice. The blue with the black. Yeah. It surprised me how nice it looks. In terms of, I'm not a fan of colouring different parts. But, yeah, happy with that. So now it's suspension time. So we need to take everything off. Um, we've done this in a different order to what we've done other cars. And I like the, doing the engine first. I think bodywork should, probably should have come off first. After the engine, maybe. But it's, we're going to change the order every time, probably. I do do things differently. But the wheels come off first. And we are going to speed this up as well. Um, still going to show it at a reduced speed compared to taking the engine apart. Just so you can see what we did and in what order we did it. But suspension and taking them apart are fairly standard. They're not difficult. Everything light, uh, lights up when and when, when, when you can take it off. Really struggling with words. Um, and what order you have to do things in. Obviously, things are blocked by other parts. But it all makes sense. The hardest, I think it's harder to put the car back together than it is to take it apart. And that's probably true of most things, to be honest. But there we go. That is everything off. Um, exhaust is now off. We're working on the front of the car. We did take out the fuel tank at the same time. 
And the brake pads on the front don't look too bad. So they should be able to be fixed. Most of this, I think, will be able to fix. We won't have to buy new, would be my assumption. We're okay for money, though. We have got just under £35,000 in the bank. We shouldn't run out of money doing this rebuild. Fingers crossed. Um, and we'll go through all the number crunching at the end. And even that wheel hub looks okay. So that's the thing. Some cars, some parts that look brilliant, look like new. They're not quite new, but they're like new. And then some of it, you just think, yeah, that's no good. But there we go. So we nearly finished taking the suspension off. The suspension for this one seemed quite basic. There wasn't much to it. Well, that's just how it seemed. It was a bit weird. I think some others have been more complicated than this one. I don't know. It's just the way it felt. But we'll take off the steering rack. Uh, we've got two rubber bushings. And then we can take off the main part. The cross member. There we go. That is all done. So we've got off, we've fixed everything, and now it's time to put it all back together. Once again, we're going to speed it up a little bit. But we're going to put it all back together. We're going to start at the back. We probably should have started at the front, to be fair. We, took, we finished at the front. We should have started at the front and gone backwards. I've just realised that. But it was just the way we did it, to be fair. There's no... It doesn't, I don't think it matters. I try and leave the wheels till last. Uh, mainly because they take up space on the viewpoint. I know the white's no better, to be fair. I might have to start leaving off like the brake disc. Not the brake disc, the brake pads. Just so you don't get the wheel out, outline. Gives you more visibility. But we're still working on the rear. Um, brakes are all sorted now. Onto the suspension. And it's going together really well. They, don't, they generally do. Suspension, for this car especially, is very basic. Very simple. We've had more complicated. Now onto the front. This has a few more working parts on the front. But again, it's not overly complicated. Lower suspension arm, shock absorber. Upper suspension arm. May not get the names completely right, but near enough. Um, brake pads, brake calipers. And that is the the front left done. Now onto the front right, as we rebuild the brake system and suspension. And so far, it's looking good. It's going well. No major mistakes, which is always a bonus for us. Um, we've made some sloppy mistakes recently. Bits we've forgotten to do. Um, and it's caused us massive delays. This wasn't that bad at all. It was very straightforward. So new fuel tank. Need to put that in. Need to buy one first. There we go. Uh, fuel fuel pump. Another brand new part. Back in. It's perfect. We'll work on the uh, exhaust now. Obviously you can't fix exhaust. So we'll actually have to buy all this brand new. Quite a standard exhaust. Nothing fancy. Nothing to really shout out home about really. The whole rebuild was just... It was enjoyable but simple, if that makes sense. It was it was nothing really flash about it. It just all slotted together well. There was nothing to really worry about. It just worked. So that is the underside done. What we had to do, we had to go off and actually sort the wheels out. I hadn't actually taken them apart and done anything with them. We have now. So these are brand new tyres. The rims have been fixed. I don't think I've wasted a rim. I think we managed to fix every rim. So we didn't have to buy one or use a warehouse one. And they're retro rims with the white wall tyres, which look really nice. They suit the era of the car. So I think that works really well. So front left wheel going on as well. Downside to these tyres, and this is what we'll do when we do, um, after the freestar version of the same car, when we do our ultimate upgraded version, we'll have to have a look at tyres, because I'm not sure... I would assume around the, around the racetrack, tyres make a difference. I think sports tyres do probably hold the track better. So we'll have to look at what to do with that. Um, we'll probably put everything on the same tyre or something. But factory rebuilds, obviously, different story. So, the engine's back in. I'm just jabbering on. The engine's back in the engine bay. So now it's time to put everything else back in. So, some of this we're going to... Well, we're going to need to buy all of it. We've managed to fix the fuse box base. Um, we didn't actually... It didn't have a top. But we've managed to fix the base. We can't fix the actual fuses themselves. But the base, we've saved a little bit of money by fixing it. And now we just need to buy all the fuses. Which we found in electronics. We need a few of these. I'm never, I don't see myself ever getting to a point of being able to know what fuses I need for what car. I just can't see myself getting to that point. I know there are people 
that can, but it's just not me. So we'll utilize the shopping list as much as possible. And the last few. So now we can put all these in. I think we'll probably have to buy the top as well, unless I had one in the warehouse. We'll find out in a second, to be fair. If you want to wear, I kind of mix between talking in first person and third person when we do these because obviously they're recorded in advance and then I voice over afterwards. So I can't always remember exactly what we've done. I watch it through several times before I actually voice over it while I'm editing it, editing it, editing it as well. So there's some things I just forget we did and it's when I'm watching it myself I go, oh yeah, we did that. Just It's just one of those weird things. So we do need to buy the top. The cover for the fuse box is there. And then it'll be a case of buying all the perishable liquid holders. So brake server. There we go. We're going to need to buy one. Add it to the shopping list. Utilise the shopping list as much as possible. There we go. Brake server in place. And while we're here, we might as well fill it up. The nice thing with the brake server, for those that don't know, you don't actually have to take the liquid out unless the job entails you to uh, empty and refill. You don't ever have to take the liquid out of the brake server. It doesn't affect anything else. Well, not that I've found so far. It doesn't change anything else you do. You don't get a you don't get a leak. You don't get fined. You only get fined if you take it off whilst full. That's a different story. Okay, battery. This car didn't have one in. So we need to buy a battery, that's an electronics as well. There we go. Not expensive. We have got a battery charger though. If we do have a battery, we find that we need charging. Um, now these two can both go on together. Power steering unit, uh, step power steering liquid holder, reservoir. That's the word I was after, not holder, reservoir. So power steering there, and we need the wind, wind, wind washer shield, washer, reservoir. I got that completely wrong. So we can, uh, we might as well put the other one in place, then we'll fill them both up. There we go. So, power steering, hydraulic fluid going in. There we go, and then we've got our window washer fluid to go in as well. And that's going well. So once that's in, we just need to look at the last things. What else do we need to buy? We need to buy a radiator. That's definitely something that's on our list. There we go. Need a radiator to go in. Nice easy one. And because the radiator needs filling with coolant, you don't need the other fans that go with it because there's a fan on the front of the engine. I've kind of realised how that works. It took me a little while to realise, but we did. Put coolant in, and that is done. So, what is left now? Let's have a look. Is there anything else we're missing in this area? can't see anything. Other than obviously adding the gearbox and stuff back to the engine. We filled, have we filled it? We did fill the oil, didn't we? Did we fill the oil? No, we didn't fill the oil. I thought I filled the oil. Obviously didn't. Oil going in. Could have just pulled the dipstick out and checked, to be honest. I think that's an amazing feature. So, I think that's everything done. The engine crane can go back. We could have put that back ages ago, to be honest. That can go back now. Um, and we now need to put the gearbox and, the, and everything else underneath back in place, the starter motor. It's weird that the undercarriage of the car is brand new, but yet the outer shell is still needing work. I know it's a weird way of doing things. Put gearbox back on. I still think that gearbox needs to be blue. I don't know if you can paint a gearbox. I've not checked. I might have to have a look at that. Right, we need a new starter motor. Oh, and I can, if you have you spotted the issue, there is something we have forgotten about. I can see it just in the corner. We've missed the rubber bush. We haven't put it in place. So put the starter motor in, and then we can sort that rubber bush out. 
I don't know how I missed it. I know I did the left hand side, but obviously I missed the right hand side. Did I miss the top one as well? I've got two brand new ones. So I did, I missed the second one. That could have been really annoying, telling me that there was stuff missing and I wouldn't know what it was. Luckily we spotted it. So drive shaft now back in place. The car will now start and will run. That's the point we're at, which is perfect. That's as far as we are happy with. So, body work. Now, the car itself, it looks a bit of a stay, and the body work does need a little bit of work. But it's not that bad. It's not as bad as what we've seen previously. The majority, I think all the parts, oh, okay. Yeah, most of the parts <laughs> are orange and fixable. Obviously, glass can't be fixed, and I really should have washed this before we started the rebuild. I need to remember to do that in future. Rear bumper as well. And yeah, most most of it will be fine fixed. Obviously, there are some parts you have to replace, like the lights, the glass. Um, but the majority we should fix and they'll be fine. And we will wash it before we do it after we've done the rebuild. Because I'm really... I'm not happy with the fact I didn't clean it before we started rebuilding it. It's not a way to do it, is it? Windshield out as well. Now, we might as well take out the internals. They all need replacing. I didn't mean the system. I actually meant to take it out. So let's take out the seats. They're gonna, they may be okay, they're green, but they're not 100%. And I don't like doing these cars when they're not 100%. It's just something about it that tells me they have to be perfect. I did also notice while I was on the screen, there was another little thing there that we hadn't looked at before. And it's where you can add something to the top. It's it's image of a spoiler. And you can actually add something to the top of the car. I don't think I've got anything. But I like the fact you could add something. Yeah, we don't have anything that goes on there. I've seen on social media you've got things like police lights and taxi sign and stuff like that. So on console, we're not going to have any of that, are we? As we've nearly forgot to take the headlights out. Um, but interesting. We'll keep an eye out. If we ever pick something up in a scrapyard that we can fix or something, we might throw it on. We'll see. But first of all, we need to weld the car. Immediately, this will make it look a little bit cleaner. That's something at least. So that will upgrade the frame. That's a little bit extra money involved there. Cost-wise, but we'll gain it back in profit, hopefully. So we'll go off and we'll just we'll go and fix all the body parts. And here we are. We're back. So every, every body part is fixed. We've now got to put the inside seats in. The inside seats. That was correct. Um, the seats in. There we go. So we, we just basically brought the exact same ones. I'm not really worried about pimping out if you want to call it that, the inside. You don't really see it. We see it when we sit in it, and that's about it. Um, so I always buy what it tells me to buy, what was in it previously, that kind of thing. But the bonnet goes on, and it's, it's looking nice already. Nice shiny bumper. Uh, headlights. I think actually starring up the seats inside the car, I think you can be starred up. I probably won't even do them. Just because it's one of those weird things that just makes no sense in my eyes. But I'll get to that when we get to that. We'll see. Licence plate, we need a new one. There we go. Some front right fender. Get my words out. Uh, new window shield. Looks different already, doesn't it? It's a completely different car. It's so satisfying when you do a factory rebuild, or, or even one star rebuild or two star, because the car looks so different. It just, it, yeah, it does give a massive sense of satisfaction that finally have it done. And like I say, this one wasn't overly complicated. I wouldn't say there was any part of it that I struggled with. It was all fairly simple. Other than we nearly made the mistake with the rubber bushings. If we had missed those and didn't notice it, that could have been an issue later on. Um, I would have assumed it's still dry. I don't know on that, on that one, actually. I don't know if it would have warned us we hadn't done it or we'd just notice it. But anyway, we found them. That's the main thing. No major issues, no major errors or mistakes. So wing mirror going on on the left. And then we just have the front left fender. The car is done. That is it. So you will see it, the interior isn't 100% because it needs detailing inside. That's the only reason. So that is the Bolt Cape Mark IV F mill from 1985. Done. Ignore the value and the profit for the minute. Well, we'll have a look at that better afterwards. So, I've gone off. I've painted the car. I've done all the other bits and pieces. And here we are. This is the colour I went with. 
I'm, you'll notice I'm very basic is probably the word I'd use with colours. I like normal colours. In future videos you'll notice my little boy will start colouring the cars and picking the colours and you'll notice the difference. But currently I've gone for basic. I went factory colour red and the inside looks so nice and clean. I think that looks really nice. I like that. Okay. Time for the lap. So this is our fifth and final lap of our five. We've been up and down with the times. I think our best previous to this lap was a 2.12.934. So not fantastic. Not when you consider the fastest time, our record so far, is held by Bolt, the Bolt Chapman at 159.8. So we're nowhere near that. So we're kind of competing against the Hinata Moon Mark II. And yeah, even I say competing, we're still a lot slower. And there was no real reason for it. I think that the car lacked power, gears were a little bit of an issue. Um, once you got to third, it kind of didn't want to go any further. It was really weird. And obviously in the factory rebuilds, we're not playing with the gearbox. That will come when we do our ultimate version. But so it'll be an interesting thing to have a look at. But yeah, currently you get to third and there just there's nothing behind it. It just kind of hovers around 30 to 40 RPM. It's really weird. It just, yeah, I just couldn't get much more out of the car. Braking wise, it wasn't too bad. Cornering, steering was fine. It was just the lack of oomph in the engine. And you got to think, we are running an i6 0HV engine. Um, for comparison, the Hanata Moon, and that's the one we're kind of racing against in our lap time on this car, did a 204. Our best is a 212. I don't think we're going to get close. But that had an i4 DOHC turbocharged engine. But the wheels weren't aligned, so it probably could have gone quicker. Um, but yeah, with this, just the lack of power was a big factor. We are going to finish the lap at least. So this is our fastest lap. So if we did a 2.12.9, uh, our final time across the line, as we round, come up to the last corner, last corner now, round the corner, and as we cross the line, our time for the bolt cape is 2 minutes 11 seconds 0.698 that puts it third out of three cars so far on our leaderboard but it's a start now for the top speed i did say during the lap it lacked it lacked, lacked speed once you hit third gear this car does not want to go up anymore it doesn't really want to rev it doesn't do anything and obviously that's a hindrance so the top time on our leaderboard so far after three cars this being the third is a 215 kilometers per hour, 133.595 miles per hour. That's our top so far. Don't expect miracles would be my first thing. As you can see, we're up to third gear already and it's kind of sitting. It's not going up much. In comparison, the Hanata Moon, which is in second place so far on the leaderboard, that did 197 kilometers per hour with an i4 DHC turbocharged engine. This is a straight i 60 HP. But as we're going to hit the wall now, as we get to the end of the, the track, you'll notice we're not even hitting fourth gear. And that was its problem. So we hit 165 kilometers per hour, which is 102.526 miles per hour. So not too bad. Obviously, it's a vintage classic. It wasn't designed to go stupidly quick. It's more for cruising down, down the street old school style. But there we have it. That's the Bolt Cape Mark IV F Mill rebuild to factory standard. With even a factory colour thrown in. So we'll talk numbers. So we paid eighteen thousand four hundred and eighty nine thousand pounds. Eighteen thousand four hundred and eighty nine pounds. I don't know why I added that one. Um, for the car itself, the shell, the chassis, it parts came to ten thousand one hundred and ninety seven pounds. Which made our total costs £28,686. And we can sell the car now for £43,020, which is what we're going to do. And that gives us a profit of £14,334. So just over £14,000 profit 
as I said, it wasn't it wasn't a long rebuild. It didn't take that long. It wasn't complicated. There was no real errors or mistakes. I'm happy. It's a small profit. It's not as much as we've made previously, but it's another one done. So before we finish, and we are finishing rapidly, we did gain a couple of trophies. Sculptor for fixing 150 body parts, and so many unneeded parts for selling a thousand parts on the inventory. And we'll finish on that note. That is it for today. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.